For the record, this is a uh, protest in Hampstead, New Hampshire, which is a very, very small town. There's the group of pro healthcare people over there, pro government run healthcare people, very small. Here's the uh, group of uh, anti government run healthcare, pro liberty people here. There's, you can see it goes beyond the sign. Some people here on the bench. Quite a large gathering considering this is such a small town. That is the town hall building there. Silent no war. 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 My name is Andrew Manus. I'm from Derry, New Hampshire. I'm the videographer here. This is my sign. Let's hear what other people have to say. What, where you're, what town you're from? I'm from Bedford. Okay. My name is Ann Paula Breath. I probably shouldn't give my name because this could be dangerous. Um, and I oppose Obamacare because I'm 69 years old and I'm not ready to, to let them let me die yet. <laughs> I, have to, I have too much to live for. I don't want um, socialized medicine and I don't want um, rationed health care. That's why I'm here. And your name and where you're from. Okay. Uh, my name's Lorna Andosha. I'm from Nashville, New Hampshire. Uh, I am mainly opposed to it because of the ambi uh, ambiguousness of the special needs clause that's in it on restricting enrollment and how they're leaving that up to a future study for cost effectiveness and such things as that. And um, considering that one in 150 people in America are born with autism, and that is just autism, that is not every other special needs that's out there, it seems unfathomable to me that they would put through a plan that, that would affect so many people without having a clear-cut plan of what they're going to do to provide these people with care. Right. I am also concerned what, about... Uh, what, is your, uh, what would you like to see happen with health care? What about I would the like current to see, system? I would like to see some reform take place um, retained in the private sector. I think where the government has to step in is that they need to put caps on lawsuits so that the doctors don't have to pay as much in insurance. They can charge less. Hospitals aren't going to have to turn around and charge $10 for an aspirin and things like that just to cover their insurance costs. I also think that um, uh, we, we need to stop providing free care for illegal aliens because that's another reason why hospital costs are so high is because they can get free medical care um, at the hospitals. And we need to cut costs within our constitutional system and not mandate what, um, what care people uh, can have what insurance well, they can the have. Uh, uh, just keep it constitutional. Hi, I'm Elaine Driscoll. I'm from Auburn, and I'm here today because I don't believe in a single payer, payer system, which is what Obama has espoused, and also uh, other Congress people. That's definitely where they want to go with this health care reform. I think that competition is very healthy in any industry, um, and I, there's so many things about this bill that are just terrible. I mean. The counseling for end-of-life procedures for our elderly. I mean, the, what kind of care is that? Uh, I, I can't. I couldn't find anything good in this particular health care reform bill. If what we would you like to see reform, happen? I, what I would like to see is um, portability of insurance, uh, possibly even across state lines, if that's possible within a company. I think that the burden should be lifted off of small business people to have to hold that whole burden of providing insurance um, for uh, industries. And I think government should get out of it. Their mandates on what insurance companies have to cover have driven up the cost of insurance to the point where it is right now. Right. And I don't believe that we should be having to cover sex change operations for people. Or abortions. Or abortion. Absolutely. Thanks. With lack of choice, it takes away my freedom. What's your name? Mike. Mike from where? Chester. Okay. So. And what's uh, tell me about the sign? Democratic tyranny. You take away choices, you take away freedom. Right. And you can't get any more personal and uh, freedom than your own uh, health care. So. 
issue with Obamacare is the fact that we've already seen TARP 1, TARP 2, GM bailout, uh, the stimulus, uh, cap and tax. We don't need anything else on our shoulders right now. We need to take it slow before we decide that we're going to overhaul a health care system that's going to affect my children and my children's children and generations beyond. What, what's your name? Where town are you from? Regina from oh. Hampstead. Okay, thanks. Hi. Hi. My uh, biggest thing and the only thing really, you know, to sum it up is that this is going to take away even more of our freedoms. Health to us is what we have and the ability to choose and take care of our families and ourselves. Uh, Without that, you know, by the government controlling it, we don't have freedom. And this is the United States of America. We need to keep our freedom, especially of our health. Okay. My name's Beth from Hollis. Beth from Hollis, thanks. I'm Jorge Mesa Tejada. I'm from Hampstead. I've been here since 1966. Okay. I've been very active in town affairs. And the one thing we pride ourselves in Hampstead is that we pay our way. We do not get government to pay for our way. And the thing that really gets my coat about this socialist regime that Obama has established is that he expects the government to pay for everything. He expects, he considers that when he says that health care is a right, right to him means the government pays, and that's false. I'll give you an example. Second Amendment gives me the right to bear arms. The government does not buy arms for me. I have the, my right to, to life, happiness, and life. I forgot the rest. Liberty, Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. That's my my duty to do that. So, uh, thing, where are you from originally? I was origi I was born in Colombia. And you're a U.S. citizen now? For 54 years. Okay. Proud. I got it while I was in the Marine Corps. Why'd you the leave Colombia and come to the United States? Because there were revolutions there. And we we're getting socialist regimes like this one. And my first revolution was when I was 12 years old. Well, what does socialism do to people? Reduces them to absolutely nothing. Totally dependent. They have no voice. The government decides for them, just like Obama wants to tell you when you can die and how you can die. And according to the bill, if you read it, you have no recourse. Thanks uh, very much. I read the bill. I have, I, you know, I laughed when this woman said that, uh, which bill? You know, she hasn't read them because there have been a lot, lots of bills out and they haven't been out yet. Well, it's a lot of bull. I got them down from the web and I happen to have read both. The uh, cap and tax and the health bill. So if citizens can get it, how come all these people were the fantastic staffers, they cannot do it? So, a message to President Obama, we don't need your socialism. We'll fight you every way, every step of the way. Yeah, exactly. What's your name? Peter Burst. And what town do you live in? Danville. Okay. Are you running for uh, Congress, are you? You're here uh, as a citizen today, aren't you? Yes, I am. Now, why is it? I've been, you know, I've really been a tremendous advocate for 40 years of grassroots politics. There's nothing I like better than what I see here: people coming out to make a, to make a difference in things that concern their lives. Right. And why why are you personally opposed to Obamacare and uh, tax and cap and uh, tax well, and trade? Well, because every piece of legislation we've seen has been thrown together and rammed down our throats. The Congress has, to, has abandoned its role as a deliberative body. <clears throat> They're playing go along, get along. In fact, they all do. That's the name of the game. And there's certain severe faults in all the legislation that's been passed so far, starting with the bailout and the stimulus, cap and trade, and now Obamacare. There, it's not that it's not that the bill is bad in every respect, but there's so many bad features, and that's why it's so important for people to come out and point their finger and shout. Well, are their you shout. in favor of a government-run system, or the government having more rule in the system, or are you um, kind of a free market type of guy? Or is there? Well, in look, government's already involved uh, sometimes for good, sometimes for ill, but this uh, setup called Obamacare is far too much of a government system, socialized system. And uh, for example, at one uh, point in the Republican attempts, feudal attempts so far, unless they can be backed up by people like well, those we see here, to give them some backbone, uh, Republicans are saying, have been saying for some time, you know, instead of uh, a public insurance option, why don't we just 
pass a law which opens up the insurance market, so it's a national market, so you promote competition among the private companies. Okay, well that's getting government out of the way, isn't it? Exactly. Okay. Thanks.